opening statements. The opening statement is the beginning of the trial. It is your opportunity to explain to the jury what the evidence will show. It's your opportunity to provide a roadmap for the jury of all of the things that are going to occur. It is a chance for you to introduce yourself, to introduce your client, to help the jury to understand the thematic approach that you have, to help the jury to understand that what they're going to see will result in something you want them to do. That when they get done, there will be no other conclusion but to rule your way, to find the defendant guilty, to find the defendant not guilty, to find the plaintiff libel, etc. The concept is to understand that the opening statement is just what it sounds like. It's a statement that opens up the case. It's a statement where you get a chance to show the jury what your evidence, what your witnesses, what your documents, what those things are going to show and how they're going to prove your case. How do you do that? Well, there are different theories on the way opening statements should be portrayed, but generally speaking, it's always good to introduce yourself. It's always good to open up with some deference to the court. It's always good to start to tell the jury where you're going to go. How do I do those things? I stand up. May it please the court. I wait for the judge to respond. Counsel, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my name is Scott Major, and along with Joe Smith, we represent the United States of America. We have the privilege of representing the great state of New York. We have the privilege of representing the defendant, Casey Anthony. My job here, in opening statement, is to explain to you what the evidence is going to show. I'm going to spend some time now and explain to you what's going to happen in this process, what evidence is going to come in, and why you should return a guilty verdict, why you should return a not guilty verdict, why you should order the defendant to pay a million dollars. The concept is that what I'm doing is I'm starting it off by explaining to them this is what the process is about, or this is what my name is, and there is no evidence in this case. You're not going to see any evidence. Or whatever thematic approach that you wish to take. You can come up with a line. You know, there is no money anywhere around. And the defendant is not entitled to steal it from my client. Or whatever type of approach you think is going to capture the essence of what is your case about in a sentence. This is a case about a bloodthirsty woman who wouldn't stop at anything, even murder, in order to get a life insurance policy. This is a story about a man who is wrongly convicted, who is an innocent man who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know? Whatever your approach is, you may want to say that at the beginning. You may want to say that after you introduce your name. The most important thing is to understand that Whenever that's presented, it's presented early on because you're establishing, okay, here's who I am, here's what my case is about. Or, let me take you through the procedure. What you're going to hear from is first me. I'm going to explain to you why I think the evidence is going to show that Casey Anthony's guilty. I represent the great state of Florida. It's my duty to prove that to you. Now, the defendant then gets to get up and give their opening statement. Now, if they wish, they can defer and wait till later. But let's assume they give their opening statement. They will then tell you why Casey Anthony should be found not guilty. Once that's completed, then I will begin calling witnesses. I will begin presenting evidence that is favorable to our case. The defendant will have an opportunity to cross-examine those witnesses. I want you to pay close attention to what my witnesses say because they're going to show you a lot of critical things. For example, you're going to hear that Miss Anthony did not report that her child was lost ever, ever. 31 days after the child was gone, the mother made a report. I'm not making this up. This is what the evidence will show. The evidence will show that for those 30 days, that she went out 27 of those nights partying with apparently reckless abandon 
to the safety and welfare of her supposed taken child. You're going to hear evidence that she accused a nanny of kidnapping and murdering the child. And you're not going to hear anything about that nanny because there's no such thing. You're not going to hear that nanny come into court. You're not going to see any documents to support that claim. So you see what I'm doing? What I'm trying to do is establish some things I'm going to show. Opening statement is not like a closing argument. While there are some components where you can argue, it is supposed to be mostly about what you're going to show them, what the evidence is going to display. So while you can use emotion, you should temper that with the evidence is going to show this and the evidence is going to show that. And you're going to hear from this witness. So I do think you should be emotional. But understand it's not the closing argument. It's your chance to explain in your own way what you think that evidence is going to show. It's to tell the jury that you're not presenting it. You're merely facilitating that process. So you in the opening statement say the evidence is going to show you because you're trying to tell the jury that it's the evidence, it's the witnesses, not me. That I'm the lawyer and my job is to represent this client. But my job is not to testify. My job is to present the evidence in a way that I best know how that will help you to understand our position. In opening statement, I have to recognize what is it that I want. I want a not guilty verdict. I want to pay money. I want to not have to pay money. I want somebody else to pay money. Whatever I'm asking for, I need to make sure that along that process, I ask for that. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, that what we're going to ask you for is a conviction. We're going to ask you to check that box that says Casey Anthony is guilty of first degree murder, that she intentionally and willfully and with premeditation killed Kaylee Anthony. I'm asking for something. I'm telling you. And let me show you why the evidence is going to show that. Then I tell my story. Then I explain to them. Witness number one is going to say this. The police officer is going to say that. You're going to hear from so-and-so. You're going to hear from the mother. She's going to tell you this. You're going to hear from the brother. You're going to hear from witness after witness who's going to tell you. And you start to help that jury to understand what is your story. Remembering at all times, what's your message? What are you trying to convey? Do you want to convey the person as a sympathetic person? Do you want to convey them as ruthless? Do you want to convey it in an antiseptic way that whether you look at it any way you look at it, it doesn't matter how you look at it. It's going to turn out the same way, guilty. Do you want to convey it with emotion, with anger, with frustration? Do you want to convey it with some sympathy? Whatever your emotion is, you build that presentation around that. You're helping them to understand exactly what your case is about. You're helping them to live the case, to feel some of the emotion. You want them to feel what it's like to lose a child. Feel what it's like to be a part of something that is wonderful. To feel the anger or frustration or absolute conviction about somebody's wrongdoing, about somebody committing a crime, about somebody raping somebody. Whatever you're trying to accomplish, the key in opening is to build your opening statement, to build this evidence around that thematic approach, around the fact that the person is bad, around the fact that this evidence is going to demonstrate this. And you do that by telling the jury what each witness is going to say, by showing them evidence. You're going to hear evidence. You're going to see the gory pictures. You're going to hear from so-and-so. And this enables the jury to understand that roadmap. During the trial, you might have people stand up and object. Understand that these are legal things, that you're not to be concerned about that, that maybe a witness won't be permitted to speak something or will. Please don't judge me or judge the opposing counsel for those objections. Those are legal things that the judge must sift out, that the judge must decide. And the judge is going to explain that to you. But it's important that you understand that because I don't want you judging anybody based on how many objections are made or whether an objection is granted or not granted. During the trial, we might take breaks. Understand that doesn't mean my case is over. Understand that those breaks are not to be held against me or my client just because they break before a witness finishes their testimony. The most important thing to understand when you're telling the jury this is to recognize that I am guiding the jury. I am constantly providing information. I am showing them what is my message. The message was there's only one witness who saw the light turn red. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to hear from witnesses. You're not going to hear from a single witness except Mr. Jones that they actually saw the car entering the intersection. 
please keep that in mind. Please remember that you must rule on the evidence. And there are not six witnesses that saw this. There is one. And that witness is going to get on the stand and tell you that he really didn't have a good view of it. And that he wasn't even wearing his glasses. So keep that in mind before you find my client liable. The concept is that what I'm doing is I'm sharing with them what I think the evidence is going to show. And then I'm asking them that once the evidence shows that, I'm going to ask you to rule in my favor. I'm going to ask you to find the person guilty. So that's the purpose of the opening statement. In some cases, you get to show some demonstrative aids, like you can show a blow up of the intersection. We're going to be talking about this intersection. We're going to be talking about when the cars entered, or maybe there's some display that's already there and you say, we all agree, both counsel agree, that we're going to be talking about this vehicle, or we're going to be talking about this knife. We're going to be talking about the things which are related to this case. You're going to see the evidence of how many times they stabbed the person. Time after 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 time. You see what I'm doing this? What's happening? They're like, boy, that's, that's some intent there. That's some intent there, even though I didn't say that. The concept is I can use these visual cues. I can use these types of things to tie in to my presentation. But again, the object of the opening statement is to share with the jury to help them to understand what journey they're going to take, to help them to understand what testimony you're going to provide. If you wish, you can actually say, the other side is going to produce testimony that says why. Let's say that they have a witness who saw the crime. Let's say they have a witness who saw the intersection. You can say in your opening, and you're going to hear from the other side, who's going to bring in a witness? And they're going to tell you they saw my client enter the intersection when the light was red. Let me tell you why that doesn't work. Or let me have you listen to these three witnesses. Or let me show you how that testimony is not going to hold water. Or let me explain to you which witnesses are going to tell you that that really isn't conclusive, that that doesn't matter. Whatever the case may be, the concept is that I can recognize the weaknesses of my case. I can anticipate what they're going to say so they don't get up in their opening and then say, well, they didn't tell you about this. And Mr. Major didn't tell you that we're going to have three witnesses that specifically saw the guy commit the crime, specifically saw his client engage in the acts. See, I, I don't want that to come up so that the jury thinks that I'm somehow hiding something. So I may want to bring up and diffuse some of those things. So it's important to understand that the opening statement is a chance not only for you to portray your story, for you to tell the evidence, but it's also a chance for you to explain what might not be so good, or to concede, or to show what might be anticipated from the other side. By doing this, you enable yourself to set the framework for what the trial is going to do. You may want to name the witnesses. You may want to say, well, you're going to hear from three witnesses on our side. Mr. Smith, Mr. Jones, and Mrs. Smith. Mr. Jones is going to tell you one, two, three, four, five. Mr. Smith is going to tell you one, two, three, four, five. Mrs. Smith is going to tell you one, two, three, four, five. So if you wish, you could do that if you think that's beneficial. You could say you're going to hear from the other side and they're going to put up Mr. Thompson, who is going to say that he doesn't agree with Mr. Smith. But the concept is to understand when you're doing this that what's most important is to convey your message. What's most important is that what you do is let the jury know what's the purpose, what message you're trying to get, and what you're asking them to do. When we get done here, ladies and gentlemen, jury, I'm going to come back to you in closing statement. And I'm going to ask you to find Casey Anthony guilty of first degree murder, guilty of second degree murder, guilty of manslaughter, whatever you're asking them to do. I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to ask you to find Casey Anthony not guilty. This case is not about innocence. This case is about whether they have proven beyond a reasonable doubt whether they have more than enough evidence, 90% of the evidence, on their side. It's not about me proving my client innocent. It's depending on what side you're on. That's the important thing. And if you do that and you ask for your prayer, then when you conclude, after you've asked for your prayer, which is, I want you to find not guilty, I want you to find the person liable, I want you to award damages, then you turn and go back to your seat. The key is to understand that a great opening statement one that explains exactly what your message is, that explains how that evidence will show and prove that message, will explain and request the relief that you want, will be a wonderful attribute to any great trial. The success of an opening statement drives the rest of the trial. 
Many jurors are moved by the opening statement. It can actually form conclusive opinions. So it is critical when you're thinking about your opening statement to be completely prepared to understand the message that you want to give and to recognize that if I show them the evidence, if I tell them where I'm going, if I explain how that evidence shows why I win, I have a great chance of victory and a great chance of success.